Hi guys, Julia here from JM Squared Vintage. Welcome back to the channel. I am here with part one of an insane haul. So I just got back from visiting family back east. And while I was there, I of course hit the bins, I of course hit the thrift, so I found some really good things. But also, all the while, my mom has been hitting up the bins and she's been hitting up the thrift, like mostly dollar days. So I think I've got in total about 90 pieces, give or take a little bit. And I'm so excited to show you some of these things. I believe most of the things that I'm gonna show you today, it's just too much to show you in one video. That, that would be like two and a half hours and I don't think anybody would watch that. But I think most of the stuff that I found today were things that my mom has found at the bins, back east, at the thrift, on dollar days, and some really like gorgeous pieces, some really unusual things that you might overlook while you're out shopping. So I'm kind of excited to show you what those things are and kind of give you a few things to keep your eyes out for while you're out shopping. But before we get started here, if this is the first time we are meeting, if this is your first time stumbling on my channel, first and foremost, welcome. I am Juliet, that is my name. We talk all things thrifting and vintage and the business of reselling on the internet. If that sounds like something that you might be into, consider hitting subscribe down below. I would love to have you along on this journey. But guys, without further ado, we have a lot to get through. I think I have somewhere between like 40 and 50 pieces to show you today. Some really great finds, some really like left of center finds that I'm excited to talk to you about. But with that being said, we've got a lot to get through. So go grab yourself a snack, grab yourself a drink. You know I've got my matcha latte. So sit back, relax, and let's get into the goods. So again, I believe most of the things that I have in this half of the haul are things that my mom found. Now, a lot of times she would send me pictures while she was out at the thrift or out at the bins and I would say yay or nay, but there are some like really gorgeous pieces in here. So let's get into it. So I'm gonna get started here with just a couple of things. And these are like unusual, but I feel like something that you'll kind of see anywhere you go. These are some kind of novelty ties. Now, not a lot of people are wearing ties anymore, but you know who is wearing ties? Teachers. Teachers wear ties. So she found a pile of these kind of cool like novelty ties. This is obviously the periodic table. This is made by Stephen Harris. I've never really heard of that guy. This will sell just on the fact that it is like tailor-made for like a chemistry teacher. Uh, we had two that she found. This is obviously a brand that most people will know, but there's a bit of a collector's market for these vintage 90s Nicole Miller novelty ties. So this is like a law themed vintage tie. These are from the 90s. This one I think will sell almost immediately. This is like 80s style neon skateboard. They're both from Nicole Miller. You can see they're dated 1996. This one's 1991. And these go for like 30 bucks a piece. So always like run through your ties. Obviously we're always looking for the Armani, the Christian Dior, like the really high end brands, but you might look past these things. Now I would definitely recommend that you do a little comping while you're in store because not every novelty tie has like a, like a following for it. I know these Nicole Miller vintage ones do and things that are specifically like teacher themed. But yeah, these are like usually pretty cheap when you can find them. Nobody really looks at them. And again, you can get like 30 bucks a piece on them. So great find. The next couple things she found, and this is primarily gonna be like an Etsy play for me. She found these beautiful vintage leather I can't remember what the name of this height is. I keep wanting to call it like a bracelet glove, but it comes up to like right about here. And so we have these beautiful soft leather. Yeah, these are lined in silk. And then she also found these incredible red leather gloves. I mean, if I didn't live in Los Angeles and had no need for leather gloves, I would be keeping these. Look at these, and they're in perfect condition. I don't quite know how old they are, but they are just, I mean, so supple, so gorgeous. I'll probably see like somewhere between 20 and $30 for these. They're a pretty standard size, so that helps. I've had some vintage leather pairs in the past that were like very, very tiny, and they took a while to sell because it's just unusual to find somebody with hands that small, but these are in great condition pretty standard size. I think that they'll go pretty quick, especially with us being like right on the cusp of winter. Talk about something I don't see ever out here, but I bet all of you in those Northern states see gloves like that pretty frequently. All right, a couple more unusual things. Now this is a weird one. So this is a little bag and some of you might recognize this. It's velvet and it's got like, it ties closed at the top. So you just kind of hold it like that. This is a weird thing. So this is from Merit Beauty. If you are unfamiliar with Merit Beauty, they're like a high-end makeup brand. They sell them at 
like Sephora. And a year or two ago, this was the like gift with purchase, this little bag. So they have this black velvet one and then they had a brown corduroy one. This one will resell for like $25 alone. The brown corduroy one right now is like right now, brown corduroys, brown suede's are like red, red, red hot. Uh, the brown corduroy one, free gift with purchase, is reselling for like $40. So it's a weird thing. <laughs> it's definitely a weird little thing, but keep your eyes out. If you've got one sitting in your closet that you're not using that you got with your purchase, uh, get it listed because people want it. So random, right? I can't think of another example of like a free gift with purchase being like sought after on the resale market, but those are. Oh, sorry, there was one more tie. This one's from 1999. This is like an auto racing theme. Sorry, this had slid to the back of the bag. Again, 30 bucks a piece. So she also found this great vintage like raffia handbag. I like the shape of it. It's kind of like a good size. It's definitely something that would be like a clutch for evening or even kind of like a uh, like a summer wedding or something like this. This is obviously a summer bag, but it's definitely vintage. It's made in Japan and it's got this cute little like kiss clasp, which I love. Very roomy, it'll fit all your things. It's is made in Japan there. I'm not quite sure what I'll get on this, maybe like 25 bucks, but I think it'll go pretty quick. It doesn't look like there was ever straps on it. So this was always made to be like, you know, like a, a clutch or something you kind of hold like this. I know with evening bags and special occasion bags, like you often can barely fit your phone. So something like this is a nice size. I think that's about it of the non-clothing items. Let's get into the clothing item. First thing she grabbed was this little Victoria's Secret, this white like modal top. It's got a round neck. It's got a tie back. This isn't from VSX, which is their athletic wear line. This is just regular Victoria's Secret. It is extra large and it is new with tags. Now, this retailed for like 39 bucks. I'll probably see like $15 on it. She grabbed it because it was new with tags. And you know, Victoria's Secret does sell. All of the pieces from Victoria's Secret do sell. They have a really like hardcore following. Like people who wear Victoria's Secret wear a lot of Victoria's Secret, not just like the bras, but like their their clothing as well. So not something that I probably would have picked up here. I certainly would never pick up something like this, even new with tags at like the thrift for like more than a dollar. But I have a feeling she got this at their bins and the bins location that she goes to is like $1.29 a pound. So she probably paid like 50 or 75 cents for that. I'll pay for that. That That's plenty of profit, but. $3.99, I wouldn't do it. Next up, you know we love linen. This is Chico's. I wanna say this is, is vintage 90s Chico's. This is a gorgeous brown linen button down shirt. Again, those browns, those kind of 1970s, those warm tones are really big right now. So keep your eyes out for it. This is a size two, which I believe is a size large. This is Turkish linen, which is gorgeous quality. Like it's a little bit of a heavier weight linen. So it's got a good drape to it. This is in perfect condition also. I'll probably see somewhere between like 25 and 32 on this. Oh, look at those pretty buttons. It's got those pretty like mother of pearl buttons. But literally like this feels brand new, despite the fact that I'm pretty sure that this is from the 90s. These kind of classic pieces from Chico's, I do pick up. Next up, she grabbed, the, I think this is J. Jill. Yeah, this is J. Jill. This gorgeous like corduroy, this is almost a shacket. It's this ultra wide whale corduroy. It's super soft. It's uh, it's just like an overshirt. It's got banded collar. I love the back of this. This is that little detail that I absolutely love. So it's got, that's a little like velvet patch right here. It's got a nice pleat in the back for movement. This is easily something you can just throw on like over something for a layer of warmth. It's also got a little velvet detail here in the pocket and the pocket is the whole pocket line. The whole pocket's lined in velvet. And then these buttons, I haven't, these buttons are stone. It's funny, like if you look up close, they kind of look like terrazzo marble. They're obviously not, far too small for that, but it is a size large, great condition. There's absolutely positively no flaws. Again, probably somewhere around $30 to this, maybe a little bit more, just because it is a slightly more substantial piece, but love these kind of J. Jill pieces. Next up, she's got this little kimono from Lori Felt. Lori Felt is a brand that I used to do pretty well with. It's pretty spendy. 
but maybe not something i mean it's something that i will keep my eyes out for in the bins and of course this is a kimono is it sized it's a size medium it's this sheer floral chiffon with lace panels in there something like this i'll get like 20 25 dollars on and it'll probably go fairly quickly you know and this is something that i will use like kimono topper piece i will also use like swim cover up because there's a lot of people who don't use these for like fashion at all they just use these as like resort wear so laurie felt I don't know if I would say to pick up her pieces. Let me know, like, do you see a lot of Lori Felt? Did you used to do Lori Felt? Does it sell well for you? Like, let me know your experience. Like, let's crowdsource some opinions to help everybody out. Because my experience is fairly limited with it and it used to be great and the pieces I have now are sitting, so let me know how you do. Oh, of course, I don't have anything like this. Though. Next up, here's a blast from like the Y2K era. First of all, I, oh, you are getting this color. I wasn't sure if the, the color of these sequins would show well on the camera. How gorgeous is this? So this is from Ali Rowe. And Ali Rowe was a pretty high-end designer. This probably retailed like $250. It's not like four or $500, but it's not a $60 dress. These, I don't know if you can see that these sequins are kind of like in stripes, just the way that they're sewn on and it's all over. It's lined in silk. The trim here is silk. It's like a raw edge trim here. And then it's completely lined in silk. So it's actually quite soft against the body. Racer back, just a little like sheath mini dress. Perfect condition, size 12. So I'm not quite sure what I'll get for this. I, I'm gonna have to carefully keyword this. I do think that this is roughly Y2K era, maybe like a little bit later. So I'll have to keyword it as such, but isn't like, I just think that the color of this is so pretty. It looks like if you're looking at it with no light on it, it looks like black. And then the second that light hits it, I don't know if I can like, yeah, so you can kind of see here, like it looks black and then as soon as you get the light on it, it starts to light up that like blue green. Let me know if you do Ali Rowe. Let me know if you remember Ali Rowe. I don't know if she is still designing. I don't know if she's still around, but back in the day, this was one of those aspirational dress brands that you would see in like Seventeen Magazine and Cosmo Girl. They were expensive and beautifully made. You know, like the material is gorgeous on this. Like you can tell that this was not, this was not a cheap dress, so. Very cool find. She's killing it, right guys? Like wait until you see some of these pieces that she found. Next up, we've got another like Y2K era dress. Now this is from Shoshana. Definitely a brand to be on the lookout for. Again, I think this is probably like 2004 or so. It's a pre, it's like a heavyweight, like cotton brocade. So it's this floral print, but what you can't, I don't think that this is gonna pick up on the camera. There's like a floral brocade pattern to the actual fabric. Strapless, just a cute little, just a cute little mini dress. Perfect condition. I'm guessing this was probably worn once for maybe a wedding. Decent internal construction. You can always tell when you look at like a strapless dress and they've got this piece inside that's gonna cinch in the boned corset. So this will actually stay up. Kind of see that? So you can, that's always just a way to tell if something's been pretty well made. This is kind of substantial boning. It's not super thin. It's not super flimsy. Don't get me wrong, like it's flexible. It's not gonna be like, it's not like a rigid stay, but it is definitely gonna give some support. This is a size four, again, in perfect condition. This probably retailed three, $400 back in the Y2K era. I believe Shoshana is still designing and uh, it's gorgeous. I'll probably see, I'm not quite sure. Again, like I see things that aren't keyworded well that are selling for like $20, $25. But I think because of the era, I think I can keyword this and get this into the right eyes. Maybe a Depop sale, but I'll probably see like 35 to 50, somewhere in the middle, somewhere in that range. It is a size four, so it'll move a little bit slower, but like I just, I definitely remember this style of dress being all the rage. Next up, oh, this was a great find. She was so excited when she found this. So this is by Anthropology, and it's a midi length dress in this pretty leopard print. I like this style of dress. Like this feels like a juxtaposition, right? Like you usually see this style of midi dress. It's very like flowy, like the style of it is kind of like cottagey, you know, with the ruffle around the neck, kind of wide with the button down. You usually see this in more of like a floral print. This feels very much of that kind of aesthetic. It is a size eight 
It's in great condition. I think that this will go in no time flat. Like just Leopard is one of those prints that never really, I mean, don't get me wrong, like it has times when it is more in demand than other times, but it never goes out of style. Just like a good floral. Leopard is just, it's a neutral. But either way, this probably retailed like $148. This is from the Buy Anthropology line, which I think is a, a relatively newer line. I'll probably see like 30 to 35. And I'm pretty sure she found that that one at the bins. Next up. Okay, so this is something that's kind of like a micro trend right now. I think it's got a pretty short shelf life. But with all the preppy style today, I just recently put out like a keywords and aesthetic video. I'll link it down below if you haven't watched it and you got 20 minutes. I would go and take a look. But I talked a lot about the preppy aesthetic and how for somebody my age, when I think of preppy, I'm thinking of like Ralph Lauren, polo shirts, cable knit sweaters, just classic, that kind of like old money feel. Today, preppy is more like bright colors and that kind of vibe. This kind of merges the two. And this right here is a rugby shirt. So rugby shirts are traditionally like a heavier weight jersey. So think like a think like a Hanes beefy tee, but make it a little bit thicker. So rugby shirts are having a moment. This is in like perfect condition. It's from Zara. It's a size large. The fact that it's pink will help it because it'll fit in both like the the preppy of the past. It also fits into the preppy of the present. So I'll probably see like 25 to $30 on this. It is something that I'm going to want to get up pretty soon because I do think that this trend in particular has a short shelf life. But if you are looking, you want to keep your eyes out. Obviously like that's Zara and people know Zara, but if you're looking at like vintage polos or if you're going through like the old t-shirt section of the thrift store, there's a brand called Barbarian and they're ultra heavyweight rugbies. They're pretty, they're in pretty high demand right now. I would really only purchase like larges and extra larges because right now the style is to wear those pretty oversized. So size smalls are gonna take a little bit of time to sell, but uh, just definitely something to keep your eyes out for, for now. Next up, great bread and butter piece. This is from Chico's, beautiful slub cotton ice blue three quarter length sleeve v-neck t-shirt this is in like brand new condition size extra large this is the kind of thing that'll go for like 25 dollars all day and in no time flat this is the thing like i find a lot of like really cool high-end brands vintage pieces out here at the end of the day they're amazing don't get me wrong i will never stop being excited about the stuff that i find but it's not going to sell as fast as something like this Something like this, a good XL and up from Chico's in a great like quality fabric, a good basic. This is usually like in and out of my closet within a few weeks. So again, while I do find really special stuff out here and I just like love to nerd out about it, you gotta have your share of this stuff because this is the stuff that keeps your business moving. All right, moving right along. So we've got next up. Okay, so this was kind of a cool find. And this is something that I always tell people to pick up, but like with a caveat. So this is from Lucky Brand. This is a nice like slub cotton, boho top like look at this embroidery down the sleeves it's so pretty and the thing is these so i see a lot of lucky brand in my location and i don't pick a ton of it up i generally will start picking these up at like extra large and up like the larger size lucky brand boho tops have pretty like dedicated following they're beautiful quality like they always have really like lucky brand is one of those brands that is like really nicely made it just doesn't resell well for the most part but with the exception of the larger size specifically boho tops something like this i won't get a ton for it i'll get you know this is cotton this is like uh, jersey so i'll probably get somewhere between 25 and 30 but i have no doubt that this will go quickly so definitely keep your eyes out for it mind your costs on it of course uh, but this was a good find i do not find the larger sizes all that often and i'm usually quite excited when i do all right next up this is a little linen shift dress this is from pure navy which i want to say that pure navy has retail prices between like 60 and 80 dollars but they, they do resell pretty well this is just a breezy shift dress very very loose fit size extra large pretty ice blue color great condition this will probably resell and again like right now this is something that you always want to list with like resort wear vacation swim cover up i mean you want to list it like that 
all the time, but in the winter, you definitely wanna make sure that those kind of vacation keywords are in it because that's gonna be who's shopping for stuff like this today. Nice little piece though, perfect condition. All right, oh yes, this was a good find. This is definitely a brand to be on the lookout for. This is Lafayette 148. If you are unfamiliar with Lafayette 148, they are an eye-wateringly expensive brand. They're more like business professional, a little bit more of like a mature style. Their quality is out of this world, like out of this world. The finishing is so fine. You can tell that the fabrics are like the best of the best. Just absolutely beautiful. This probably retailed in this little square neck, elbow length sleeve top, just very much a basic, something that somebody will wear it under a blazer. This probably retailed like $250. Look at, like, look at that neckline. Can you see how that is done? It's literally like tucked in here. It's just those little details, those little beautiful finishing details that just set it apart. I'll probably see like somewhere between 30 and 50 on the resale market on this. It is a size large, it's a great color, it's again, brand new condition. I'll pick up this brand anytime I see it. It's a, it's a little bit of a slower mover because it's not a brand that's super well known, but when it does sell, it does tend to sell for a good price. So keep your eyes out for it. And of course, if you are in the market for gorgeous, like business professional pieces or stuff like, like good high-end basics, uh, check out their stuff because their quality is like, these are lifetime purchases. Like this, if you care for it, this kind of stuff will last for years and years and years and years. Really, really beautiful stuff. Let me know, do you find Lafayette 148 where you are? Like, what kind of stuff do you find? Do you sell it? Do you pick it up? Let me know. If not, if you don't, if it's not on your radar, get it on your radar, because like, like I said, that's a t-shirt and that probably retailed about $250. So that should give you an idea of how expensive that brand is. Next up here, we got another great little bread and butter. This is soft surroundings. This is a size small, but isn't this adorable? It's just cotton slub. It's got kind of belled out sleeves and these will hit like bracelet lengths. So they'll hit like right here on the arm. This is the stuff I love with soft surroundings. These kind of basics with the special touches. This has inside out seaming, beautiful little button detail here on the side. I feel like this is one of their little signatures. I've had a couple sweaters from them with details just like this. But something like this, this is obviously a less significant piece from Soft Surroundings, but something like this, I'll probably see $20, $25 on. The sweaters that I've sold that are like this have sold between like 30 and 40. So Soft Surroundings is just one of those, it's like a Sundance. It's a company that makes like basics with a twist, really nice quality and people love it. Again, something I do like to source at higher sizes whenever possible. Like if you're seeing something like this and the regular thrift and it's like $6.99, I might walk away from it. If you see this shirt and it's like a size extra large, 1X, 2X, uh, then we're talking. Absolutely pick that up. Next up, she found, I think she found this at the bins as well. This is a We The Free little t-shirt. It's cotton slub, very interesting sleeve. So these are ruched all the way down. It kind of has a, uh, almost like a puff sleeve or like a leg of mutton sleeve look to it because it's really slim from like here down. Again, brand new with tags. It doesn't really say the style name, but it retails for $68. So just lest we forget how expensive these t-shirts are. It is a size small, but something like this, these We The Free t-shirts, they resell for me really well. And this in particular, this pink look with like the decorative arms, this can be filed under ballet core. This is coquette. This has a lot of those like core style aesthetics that you can really leverage in this. And it's brand new with tags. So that never hurts. I'll probably see like 25 to 30 bucks on this because it is new with tags. And I wouldn't doubt that this would sell pretty quickly. Next up, she grabbed this little Victoria's Secret robe. Now I don't pick up a ton of Victoria's Secret robes. This one I we did like because it had like an integrated belt and mostly we liked it because of the color. Like this is the kind of thing that I will leverage like wedding style tags in because this is the kind of color that a lot of like brides will wear if they're not wearing like a white satin robe, they'll wear something like this. 
I mean, it's not something that I'm going to get like 35 or 40 bucks on. I'll probably get about $20 on it. It's not like it's not silk or anything. It's just satin, but it is in great condition. And these things do retail like 60, 70 bucks. So this is just something that I think will be a pretty quick sell with a decent profit. I think she got this at the bin. So she probably paid like 75 cents for it all in. And again, the belt is there. This is like the big thing. If you're looking at belts, always make sure that the belt is attached. If you don't have the belt and you're looking at a robe, unless it's something really exceptional, I would generally say leave it behind. It's like this color and there's like a dusty pink that they do, both used pretty frequently by brides. Next up, we've got another robe, same vein. This one doesn't even have a tag on it, but we liked the color, we liked the pattern, and we liked the length. This is a pretty long, this is like almost to the floor length robe. But again, this like dusty, like French blue with the belt. Again, something I'll probably see like $20 on. Definitely not something that I would pay full price for in a regular thrift store. You know, dollar days, bins, two bucks. This will sell fairly quickly just because of the print. Again, not silk, but that print is just so pretty. And I would leverage all of the keywords I possibly can. This is like glam, this is dressing gown, bridal, etc., etc. Next up here, are you ready for these? Can we say vintage olive green leather pants? Aren't these absolutely fabulous? Okay, so this has a lot going for it. Number one, it's vintage. Number two, it's leather. Number three, it's a high-end brand. The designer here is Carla New York. These were very, very expensive back when they were new. These were probably five, six hundred dollars. The thing I love most about these is like we find, you know, every once in a blue moon I find leather pants are almost always black or brown. These are olive green. The thing that's the best is that this cut is like the cut that is in right now. I mean, I don't think I've ever found a pair of leather pants that isn't like a skinny leg. This trouser cut is just fabulous. It is missing a button, which I think in my little button basket, I have something that matches the, the welt buttons on the back here, but like, is this not? And they're in such good condition, the leather, is really nice it's still quite supple these are obviously from the 80s but i just i just think that they are the most fabulous pants like what a great find this is something i don't even think she sent me a picture of these she just grabbed them because she knew but they're just so unusual these will go quickly i'll probably see i don't know like there's no comping on this but i'm somewhere between 50 and 100 dollars on these these will go and they're a size six so like this will go to like a fashion girly in new york and uh somebody will make a real fabulous outfit out of these i mean they're just so unusual and definitely like i don't care what event you're going to i don't care what high fashion event you're going to there is going to be nobody with vintage olive green leather trousers oh my God. i i would kill for these to be in my size i would kill another leather piece that she found this is i mean I wish you could feel this because at first like it's it's so soft and so supple that at first I like I was not convinced that this was leather you know you can see the grain when leather gets soft and supple when it gets kind of worked it kind of wears in a pattern that faux leather is just never gonna do and uh yeah so this is leather it's like kid skin leather it's a mini skirt and it's like a size I think this is like a size 18 16 or 18 in perfect condition the only weird thing is that there is no tags anywhere on this. There's no maker's tag, there's no size tag. I wish I knew, cause it is, I mean, it's really, really nice quality. Fully lined. At the first I thought it was like this and then it had a zip in the back with a little slit for movement. But the more I looked at it, if you can tell, you see how there's a dart here and no dart here. So this is something that would be over like the bum. It's something that you know, you do in patterning to like give a little bit more room for the seat. So it's actually like this, you see there's the two darts in case you're ever looking at a mini skirt and you're not sure. So it's got the side zip and then it's got, this is like a little side slit. Isn't this fabulous? I'm gonna do a little bit more research, see if I can find something cause that side slit is unique. But again, a really great condition, probably 40 or 50 bucks on this. I'd love to be able to find the designer cause I do think that this is high end, but what a cool find. And I mean to find like a plus size leather skirt, real leather skirt, not faux leather in the bins. I'm pretty sure she said she got that one in the bins. 
I'm telling you, we took a couple hours and went through all of the finds that she had. And I mean, there were certain things that I, that we ended up donating back, but like, I was blown away by the stuff she found. Next up, oh, this is from Notori. To that tag there. Notori is a high-end kind of lingerie brand, if you are unfamiliar. Uh, this is brand new with tags and it's a little caftan. So something like this will resale probably like $30, $35. It doesn't show what it originally sold for. The price part is taken off. But Notori's pretty expensive. This was probably $100 or so. It is satin. It's not like silk satin, but it's a beautiful pattern. It's got, it's, again, it's brand new with tags. So again, something like this, you're going to use resort wear, you're going to use swim cover up, you're going to use poolside, vacation, all those keywords. This is something that will be sought out by somebody who is going on vacation and wants something that goes poolside to cocktails. The gold standard in something like this, if you are ever out shopping, is to find like an Emilio Pucci, like a silk Emilio Pucci caftan. Those things sell for like five, six hundred dollars. So if you see them, because Pucci, like obviously if you're into fashion, like Pucci is a name that you know, but I think that there's a lot of people, if they might not know who Emilio Pucci is, so like they do turn up in the thrifts from time to time. So keep your eyes out and let me know, have you ever found a Pucci caftan? I want to know about it. Did you keep it? Did you sell it? How much did you sell it for? But they're very specific and you want to use resort wear. You want to use all those keywords. But if you find a Pucci one, uh, that's going to sell itself. Also, if you find one in my size, uh, let me know before you list it. Next up, here's one of a couple Victoria's Secret gold label pieces that she found. Now, Victoria's Secret, I'm very selective with what I do pick up. Gold label is this, right? So it's the cream background with the stitched gold logo there. This is from the 90s and this in terms of like Victoria's Secret, unless it's something that's like sold out or on trend, this is the kind of stuff that people are looking for, this 90s piece. So this is just a nightshirt, it's satin, it's this beautiful like royal, oh god I love this color. It's in perfect condition, it's a size medium. Something like this, and I will say, if you do this, these uh, Victoria's Secret, these vintage Victoria's Secret nightgowns tended to have dyed to match fabric covered buttons. So if you see it out in the bins or if you see it out in the thrift and you're thinking about picking it up, make sure that all the buttons are present and accounted for because you will not find a replacement for this. Unless you happen to have like a dye kit and know how to like color match these kind of things. But you know, when you're looking at this, this is literally like the same fabric that is here. There will be no replacement of those buttons. Something like this, I'll get probably 35 or so. The gowns are a little bit like the actual like slip gowns are the most in demand, but this kind of stuff people love. Next up, now this is a cool thing she found. She found this a while ago and I just haven't wanted to list it until I could ship it from my own house. So this is a leather croc embossed belt from Trafalgar. Now Trafalgar is something I've talked about on the channel before, but if you're new, I'll for sure break this down. Trafalgar is a very expensive brand. This belt probably costs over a hundred dollars like their leather belts they're just really well made they're a brand that people know it is a label you want to keep your eyes out for more so in like suspenders and braces they do these like novelty weave suspenders and i'll see if i can find a picture and put it up here so you can see kind of what i'm talking about those things have they tend to be like a limited edition and people collect them so Something like this, I'll probably get like 30 bucks for just, it's just a really high quality, like brand new condition belt, 42. So I think that this does not look like it's a, this is probably a 42 inch belt, not for a size 42. But those suspenders, if you can find them, will go for like over a hundred dollars. They're regular braces. Like I've sold a pair of like regular navy blue braces and I, they sold, I want to say like 45 bucks. So it's definitely a brand to be on the lookout for and something that you might not have on your radar. So if you don't have that on your radar and you don't check out belts and braces slash suspenders, put it on your radar. I, it's funny, like it's something that I never would have thought about, but, but my mom, when she came out here and we went out to the bins, she found a lot of like four of them. She's like, Julia, these are so expensive. She's like, I was looking for a pair and didn't realize that these things sold, like even the low end stuff, if you go to like Macy's, whatever, like the low end suspenders and braces sell for close to $100. So keep your eyes out for it. And there's something that people need, right? Like they're, you know, some people just don't like wearing belts. So they wear suspenders and braces and that's their thing. So keep your eyes out for them. She found three pairs that day and I sold through, I think two of them. And I've had a lot of interest in the third one. So closet little niche that I don't think a lot of people look at. All right, next up, this is a pretty little cocktail dress from David Meester. This is, I think, 90s vintage, if memory serves me right on that tag. 
This is, but I mean like it's 90s vintage, but it's also like so classic. <laughs> the little bows and that tag are the only thing that kind of give me that vibe. But this is about midi length. This goes down below the knees and it's a sheath silhouette, but look at this fabric. Can you see the texture on that? Like this is, that's all embroidered in there. It's really nice. This is in beautiful condition. It's a size six. David Meester is very expensive. I want to say that his dresses retail somewhere around like four to six hundred dollars. I think I'm getting that right. It might be a little bit more expensive. Very, very spendy, beautifully made. And again, this is something that is 90s vintage, but so classic. This can be worn today and would look totally like in style. Something like this, I'll probably get probably about 50 to 60 bucks. That's about what I get on his dresses. That's a great return when we're paying like a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. I would even comfortably pay up for his stuff, just knowing that it would take a little bit longer to sell because they do tend to be like occasion dresses and just in general occasion dresses take a little bit longer to sell. But if you are in the market for like a cocktail dress, you have a wedding coming up and you're looking on the secondhand market, check out David Meester's stuff. Very classic, very elegant, beautiful beautiful fits, beautifully made, and you can probably get a five or $600 dress for like 50, 60 bucks. That's a steal and that's less than you'll pay at Target for one of their special occasion dresses. So bargain. Oh, this is so pretty. Okay, so this is a shirt and definitely a brand that neither my mom or I knew, but this is from a brand called Chino. I believe they're still in business and they're very, they're sold in like high end kind of artsy boutiques. Like the one place that I found that sold this, and it doesn't look like the boutique exists anymore, but it, it sells these like niche high-end brands, a lot of them from Europe. One of you had called out a brand called Diega that's like super high-end, it's European, they don't ship to the States. Like this is sold in the kind of boutiques that sold that. Like in particular, I found one that also sold Diega. So this is extra small, which kind of stinks. It'll take a little longer to sell, but the quality on this is unbelievable. So it's got little contrast cuffs, the fabric is this gorgeous lightweight cotton. It's got roll tab sleeves. Look at the detail on the placket, right? So that's like the front of the placket. This is the this is the placket on which the buttons sit. So like that's a little bit of like gross grain ribbon that just kind of like reinforces it. These are the kind of details that you don't see when you are like looking at a shirt, but the fact that it's there just tells you the level of quality. So like, look at the buttons. Can you see, like these are mother of pearl, but there is like metal lining the buttonholes. I don't know if you can tell that, but I just like no expenses spared. This retailed like $150 and a lot of these shirts on the resale market go in like the 40 to $50 range. Of course, this is extra small, so it's just gonna be a slower seller just based on the nature of the size. But let me know if any of you have ever found a shirt by this designer, like beautifully made. It just like, this just reeks of like, luxury construction. So I'll be keeping my eyes out for it. It does seem like they have a bit of like a like a cult following, um, understandably so, but what a beautiful find. And again, this is just something that my mom saw and she's like, look at the quality of this thing. So she picked it up. And again, I think she found that at the bin and probably paid like 50 to 75 cents for it. Next up, this was an interesting, she just did this as a style pickup. She didn't know what Dynamite was. Dynamite is like a fast fashion company. I would probably not necessarily tell you to pick it up, but just because of what this is, I think that this will go. This is just a little linen crop top. It is a size extra small, which, you know, will slow it down. But for the person who's gonna buy something like this, I think that this will still probably move fairly quickly. I'm not gonna see much more than like $15 on this. This probably retailed for like $35 on Dynamite site. They're, they're kind of like in the same vein as a Zara. They have like pieces that are made out of nicer fabrics like linen, and then they have pieces that are made out of polyester. So I tend to like their styles quite a bit. They remind me a little bit of Commence with, um, with a slightly nicer construction quality, but this is perfect condition. I don't think it'll sit around all that long. I like the color, I like the silhouette of it. Again, I probably won't see much more than $15 on it. Definitely not something I would recommend, especially something this insignificant, definitely not something I would recommend you pay up for. If you see it in the bins, great. Just make sure that you're keywording it to get it in front of the right eyeballs. Next up, now this is an older tag Zara piece, but because of what it is, it makes sense to grab it. This is a leopard print, kind of satiny. It's not super shiny satin. I don't know if you're seeing the luster on this, but it, it feels like um, it feels like the backside of satin. So it's got a little bit of slip to it, but not super shiny. It is a size large, I believe. 
Yeah, size large, open front, and an oversized blazer. This will go in no time flat. Again, this is the kind of thing that will just, there will forever be in every era of fashion, forever and ever, there will be somebody who wears something like this. So something like this, again, it's Zara, it's not a super high-end brand. This will still go for like 35 bucks and I have no doubt that it'll go quickly. It's a good size and it's a good leopard color. Sometimes they're a little too orange, sometimes they're a little too brown. This is like a perfect in the middle neutral and it's in perfect condition. All right, next up, this is a little piece of Talbot's. Talbot's are very much bread and butter. This is something that I'll see like 15 to $20 on. Beautiful, lightweight gingham shirt, roll tab sleeves. Again, gorgeous quality. Talbot's is very nice quality. It is pretty expensive to buy retail. So it is the kind of thing that has like a big following. Like Talbot's is what, like I pick up a lot of niche brands, but Talbot's is something that like, everybody knows and a lot of people love. Again, I'm not gonna get a ton of money for it, but if you're sourcing it for the right price, it's usually a good bet. This is a size medium. Talbot's is one of those brands I like to source a little bit higher size. And I and I just don't think that this will sell until maybe next summer. It is just, this is the scream summer. This isn't even something that's like resort wear. This is an everyday wear piece. The color is like a light orange, kind of like a sherbet gingham. This just reeks of July, you know? Let me know, do you do a lot of Talbots? I don't pick up a ton. I actually don't see a lot. I see some pieces that are smaller, but Generally, if I'm outsourcing, I'm not picking it up unless it's an extra large or above. Uh, let me know, do you do a lot of Talbots? Does it sell well for you? Let me know like what your criteria is. It's always interesting. People have, different people have different kind of niches in terms of what they pick up. And obviously you have repeat buyers. So let me know, let me know how you do with it. Next up, we've got another little Chico's piece. This is, this is like an anniversary piece. It says Chico's 30 unforgettable years. It's a size large, it's sheer. It's like a crinkled gorget with this beautiful like sequin and embroidery work around the neckline, wider sleeves. And it's pretty much new with tags. Like it has, it has a few extra sequins on it. I have. If I have to guess, there was maybe a few more things in this little bag at one point, but I don't think that this has ever been worn. It's kind of like a blousey peplum style. Something like this I'll see like 20 to $25 on. It's a little bit smaller than I would like it to be, but it is a special piece. Like look, I don't know if you can see it, like that gold embroidery. It's definitely an interesting piece. Yeah, something like something 20, 25 to 32 on that. Next up, this was a cool piece. My mom sent me a picture of this with a, I used to have shirts like this. So this is a vintage Diane von Furstenberg. So that is, I mean, obviously a similar tag today, but you can just tell if you like had your hands on this. This is vintage, I think from the 70s. It, it, this is not silk, it is polyester, but it's this kind of cool mustard color, blue sun sleeves, and this really like aggressive necktie. This feels so, like I could see Diane von Furstenberg herself wearing something like this. Now, I think like obviously if you find Diane von Furstenberg, the number one thing you wanna find is those wrap dresses. They sell really, really well. They're beautifully made, they're classic silhouettes. They're usually like silk jersey. They feel like a t-shirt, but they're 100% silk. And I've resold a bunch of those in the 100 to $150 range. Something like this I'll probably get like somewhere 30 to 40 on. It's just so fabulous. Like I can see, like I can see somebody wearing this today. Like I can see this in like a modern fashion outfit, but it is gonna be a limited pool of people because this is a bold statement, but still very cool to find a vintage piece of DDF. I will always pick that up when I see it as long as that price is right. Next up, this is an interesting thing. Okay, so this is from, this is from a designer called Elena Baldi, made in Italy. I'm not quite sure where this is sold but like I wish you could feel how absolutely feather light this silk is like the float on this this is like I, I, I don't know if I've ever felt silk this light it's this beautiful like watercolor floral print it's like a poncho style top it's lined like the the lining here is cotton and it's sleeveless and then it's just this kind of like shark bite hem this like poncho style and it kind of goes out like that so little light sleeves. I'm not quite sure where this was sold. I see a couple things on the resale market going in like the 30 to $35 range. So probably around there it is a size small, so it might take a little longer to sell, but it's beautiful. Let me know if you've ever found something by this designer. I couldn't find much about her, 
when I was looking it up, but man, like this is just as delicate as delicate could be. Just need to make sure I'm not putting this on something with like beading and sequins. Next up, we've got another great bread and butter piece here. This is J. Jill. These kind of things from J. Jill sell really quickly for me. Never for a ton of money, but they do sell really quickly. This is just that slub cotton kind of longer short sleeve, which I love. V neck, V back, Pima cotton, so as soft as soft could be, size medium, so this is like a nice kind of oversized fit. Something like this probably retailed like 50 bucks and I will see like $20 for this and I have no, it's in like brand new condition. And it's, pr it's pretty modern, just going by, like they're kind of basics when you have the name of the model there, you know that it's fairly recent. This will sell in no time flat and I'll probably see about $20 on it. Oh, this was a gorgeous find. These are very wrinkled. They're a hundred percent silk. And this is from Real Clothes by Saks Fifth Avenue. I think that this was a brand that they did in the nineties. I don't know if they're still doing it. So these are just like tailored trousers. They're probably like ever so slightly ankle length. They have a nice little ankle slit here. These are perfect condition. These will look so stunning once I steam them out. They're a size six. I want to like, these are just very, very elegant. This is something that somebody would wear to like a wedding, right? Or like a nice brunch Easter with this color. Something like this. I've sold a couple things from uh, real clothes in like the 30 to $50 range. I'll probably see about the same. These again, I think are maybe from the nineties just based on that label, but they're very timeless. Like I can see these being sold today in Saks Fifth Avenue. So gorgeous fine. And I mean, like, I wish you could feel how like light as a feather these are. These just will probably feel fabulous in hot climate. All right, moving right along. Next up, this is an interesting thing that she picked up. She picked this up because she thought it was really pretty and understandably so. This is from Curio, which I think I see in like TJ Maxx. I couldn't find much about it online. Let me know if you know where you can find it, but like look at the lace work on this collar. This is an open front cardigan. It's a size large, kind of cropped length. The sleeves are this kind of looser open knit here. And then this is like the cascade collar that they have. It's really beautiful. I see other pieces from Curio on the resale market for like 20 to $30. I anticipate that's about what I'll get for it, but isn't that pretty? It's just very different. That's the label. Let me know what you know about this brand. I've, I feel like I've seen it. I feel like I've seen Curio, but I feel like I've seen a different tag. So maybe this is an older tag. It is 100% cotton. So it is, it is quite nice. So I'm not quite sure. So I guess somewhere 20 to $30 on this, but let me know, is this a brand that you guys pick up? Is it a brand that you guys see a lot? You know, maybe it's something that I pick up if this is something that moves well for us. You guys, she picked up so many sweaters. We're just getting into them. So this is from Oliver O. I think this is a boutique brand. I've never really heard of it, but it's just so pretty. These are like peasant shaped sleeves. So they're nice and like blousy, but they do kind of pinch in at the wrist. So it'll have that really nice drape to it. It is 100% cotton in this beautiful like crochet style knit. I think that this is machine done, but really beautiful. Again, something that I will use resort wear, vacation. This is something that I can see over a pair of crisp white pants out at brunch in like Palm Beach. I'll probably see like 20 to $30 on this. Again, I don't really know the brand. It is a size extra large, so just gorgeous. That is like screaming for cocktails by the beach. Next up, she grabbed this. This is just a men's sweater. I'm not familiar with the label, but it is extra fine merino and in great condition. This is like a green gray v-neck, just over sweater, ultra fine merino. The brand is black and brown or black brown 1826. Let me know if you know anything about this because I have not been able to find anything while searching, but the quality here is gorgeous. So at least like just based on the color and what it is and what it's made of, I'll, I'll probably see somewhere between 20 to $30 minimum, maybe a little bit more. Let me know what you know about this brand because again, I just couldn't find anything on them. So next up, this is such a pretty one. This is Talbot's and she grabbed this. I just think that this is such a pretty sweater. So this is kind of like a chunky turtleneck. The color is coming across very gray on the camera and it's got like a little, it's like a cloud gray. So there's a little bit of blue to it, but let me get you up close to like the, the texture of that yarn. You can see like definitive specks of white 
woven in it. So it's just like a really unique yarn. And when you feel it, this feels like alpaca. It's a very distinct feel, but I don't think it actually is alpaca. And it's such an interesting blend. Like it's got a little bit of everything. 30% nylon, 29% wool, 16% silk, 14% acrylic, and 11% mohair. Like, and I guess that's what makes that interesting texture on that yarn, but it is just so pretty. It feels brand new. It's a size medium, but I think just based on what it is and the color and the texture, like I'm definitely gonna be getting like a close up of that yarn for the listing. Like I'll probably see about $30 on this just because of what it is. Uh, this is one that I picked up at the bins while I was there. I, and this is a Depop sale for sure. I'm about to trigger some flashbacks for you guys. So just like buckle up. Look at this vest. Did you or did you not have this vest in 1992? You wore them with high fastening jeans, most likely acid washed. This is straight out of 1992. There's no tag in it. It's probably a large, extra large. This will sell on Depop for like 25, 30 bucks. And I have no doubt that this will sell pretty quickly. There is just an entire subset of people that shop on Depop that are looking for stuff like this. This is very like grandma core. This is very kid core. I will be doing more of these like trends and aesthetics videos with more like the core aesthetics, kind of breaking down what each of those mean. But this, I would use grandma core. I would use kid core. I'd use 90s vintage, 80s vintage, pastel, patchwork. Like this is made to look like a quilt. So fun. And it's in great condition. I showed that to my mom while I was in the bins and she was just like, yeah, that is not something that I would have picked up at all. <laughs> but I'm telling you, she picked up, okay, are you ready for this like cache of handmade sweaters? Look at this. So I believe this is mohair or alpaca. Like, let me get you up close on that knit. You can kind of see the nap of it here. This is handmade by Joan Gosselin beautifully knit like can you see the deep can you see like the pattern there the pattern it's just it's just it's like a cable knit but kind of open weave you would have to wear something underneath it and it's kind of interesting because a lot of you spoke up when i found some other um, handmade sweaters you're like oh i used to be able to buy those labels like handmade by judy in like joanne fabrics and fabric stores like this is somebody's first and last name like this is somebody who knit so much that she ordered custom tags to sew indoor sweaters. So this is probably about a size small. It's beautifully cozy. It's gorgeous. This color is so rich and vivid. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll do like a burn test on some of this to see if I can figure out, like I don't think that this is acrylic. I think that this is like Angora or mohair or something like that. It has a very unique feel to it, very fuzzy. So something like this, I'll probably see like 30 to $40 on. These handmade sweaters, sell really well the cream ones sell better than most but this all again probably 30 to 40 dollars on this beautiful and that's the first of several handmade sweaters so buckle up the second one like could she leave this behind this is hand knit little baby sweater look at the buttons on this like the buttons alone are so unique I'm not sure what this is made of. It's very soft. I'm sure this would feel very soft next to like a baby's skin. I wanna say that this is probably size like nine months to a year. So precious. I might see if I know somebody who's got a baby around this age to gift this to because it is just such a little treasure. But if not, I'll probably see like $25 on it. And hopefully this goes to a good home and gets passed down and passed down. This is somebody's like blood, sweat and tears that was made for their grandbaby. We cannot let stuff like this go into the waste stream, guys. Next up, this is a Chico sweater. It's a size three, so an extra large. I love this burgundy color. It's got like flared with a slit. Elbow length sleeves, maybe a little bit longer than elbow. This would hit like right here. It's got this kind of chevron ribbing with a curved hem. Something like this, again, like 25 to 30 bucks. Great bread and butter piece from Chico's that I'm gonna be listing at exactly the right time. Beautiful color though. This kind of color is one of those colors that's like in style right now. Oh, another gorgeous sweater from a brand that I generally don't pick up. And again, I think that this is mohair or angora. Look, at, first of all, look at this color. It's showing up a little bit brighter than it is in person. This is like a soft orange. It's turtleneck, like look at the weave. You can kind of see the nap to it. I wish you could feel this. Raglan sleeve, again, feels like this could have come out of a store yesterday. This is from Moda International. Again, I think a brand that we see at like TJ Maxx. This does have a tag. So it's 54% kid mohair. 
and then 25% acrylic and 21% nylon. Made in Hong Kong, another one made in Hong Kong. But again, this is absolutely beautiful. I'm not quite sure when this is from, like, and if you can tell, the knit kind of goes on a diagonal, like the knit pattern is like bias. It's funny, I have this like laying over my arm and my arm is like overheating. This is so, <laughs> this is so warm. And this is one of those things that's like, it's quite a thin sweater, but it's providing some warmth. So if you are somebody who likes super warm sweaters, but don't like bulky sweaters, something like this is gonna, is gonna be for you. But absolutely gorgeous. I'm not quite sure. Again, this is a brand I don't generally pick up. Usually I see things from them selling like $15, $20, but this is a special like yarn. So maybe a little bit more, $30, $35. We're almost there guys, like four more pieces in this bag and we'll call it a day here. This is another handmade sweater. Again, mohair or angora or alpaca, like look at that knit. This is like a dolman sleeve and it's kind of a blouson fit with like a, a tall waistband. I don't know if you can see that. That's like cable knit down here. Beautiful and then ribbed up here, like chunky rib. This is a chunkier sweater. Mock turtleneck and another hand knit by first and last name tag there. So this is probably a size large or an extra large, nice and cozy, just beautiful. Something like this, again, probably around that $40 mark. These handmade sweaters are just like important to pick up while you're out thrifting. Just, this is somebody's, like this is somebody's blood, sweat and tears. And we need to make sure that these go on. You know, this is obviously many, many, many hours of handiwork. And we need to make sure that these go on and live lives after they get donated. Really beautiful. We're going back into flashback land. Sorry, 80s babies, but this is another one that I picked up. And this is again, another Depop sale. Like did we, or did we not wear this sweater in 1986? Like look at this label. That just reeks 80s. This is in great condition. 55% Raimi. I feel like you don't see things made out of Raimi anymore. It's just like a chunky little blue sun sweater straight out of the 80s. I'll see 25 to 30 bucks on this. Again, most likely on Depop. Two more to go here. I can't remember. I think my mom found this one. Again, again with this mohair knit. And this is something that also might go on Depop just because of what it is. This is a sweater vest. Again, hand knit. And this beautiful light blue. Do you see that nap? It's the same stuff. I do think that that's mohair. Like this is like an open weave knit, but if you look closely, like that's open weave, but you can't see through it. The nap of the yarn is so long that it really closes up the hole. So despite the fact that this is open knit, like it's going to be quite warm. Sweater vest, V-neck, beautiful condition. This is like a size extra large. And again, definitely handmade with a little like cable knit detail there in the middle. I'll probably see somewhere 30 to $40 on this. Like all these hand knit sweaters, I couldn't believe it. And the last one, and this will go in no time flat. This isn't like an Aran Island sweater, which is an always pick up guys. If you see an Aran Island sweater, a Scottish wool kind of chunky cream sweater, in particular that cream color, Scottish wool, Irish wool, especially Aran Islands. They will sell in like two or three days and they will sell for 40 or 50 bucks. But this is hand knit, 100% wool. I'm almost positive 100% wool with this kind of like fair aisle round neck. I mean, this is like chunky and cozy and oversized. Like there's no tags. There's, you can tell that like on the inside that this is handmade. This kind of thing I will see probably 35 to $40 on. And I have no doubt that this will sell really quickly. Somebody will pick this up. And I bet like this is a, definitely like a size extra large men. So it's like real oversized. So, so cozy. Oh, I just, I'm just noticing right now that in this little like fair, that's a duck. That's a duck in the pattern. <laughs> Whimsy. Whimsy. I love it. Yeah, so great finds all around. So guys, that is it for the first half of this massive haul. Again, I think I've got about 90 pieces all in. And guys, when I tallied up the grand total in terms of like cost of everything, now obviously these are things that you just have to estimate on because they're just, they're handmade. But when I tallied up the total like MSRP of all the things that she and I found, we're at like 13 and a half thousand 
dollars. And when it comes to sales, I'm estimating that I've got somewhere between $2,300 and $2,600 worth of sales from this haul. So, but guys, thank you so much for hanging with me while I go through these hauls. When I was going through this with my mom, she was showing me all the things she found. I could not wait to like show you guys what she found. She, I think she absolutely killed it. And the next half is like just as good, if not better. So again, I know you all are just so busy. It's the holidays. We are scheduled to the teeth. So I appreciate anybody taking a little bit of their time to hang with me. But guys, if you had fun, please consider leaving a like or a comment on this video. Of course, don't forget to hit subscribe. But without further ado, guys, I know this was a long one. Have the most beautiful week. Happy hunting, and I will see you all in the next one.